Yes, you can have DID and a job at the same time. Hey goblins and welcome back. My name is Cleveland and I am a gatekeeper in the Ether system. Today I'm going to be talking about having DID and having a job. If Drago won't be too disruptive to let me film. But having a job while you have DID or DDNOS or OSDD is completely possible and something that many people have. Well that's definitely not the way it is for everyone with these disorders either. Just because they are life-changing disorders doesn't mean that they will inherently change your life. Something like this doesn't mean that you're incapable as a person, and it definitely doesn't make it impossible to do things. Sometimes it can even be helpful. We've seen people with DID in basically every field that exists, even down to medical professionals and therapists. Yet even lawyers, teachers artists, everyone. Anyone could have DID and work anywhere that they'd want to. Although in some cases DID is debilitating enough to keep you from being able to work a full-time job. And that's totally fine as well. Sometimes it's difficult to find a job that you'd be able to work given your specific case. And sometimes those jobs don't exist where you are. Admittedly, we spent a good few months unemployed because we couldn't find a job that suited us for a while there when we lived uh, in our previous city. So I suppose the first step in all of this, I guess I'll just go down the list in the process of it all, finding the job. <laughs> so when it comes to what we do in our process, this is kind of, you know, our thought processes, what we use to get our jobs. And this may not inherently work for everyone. This will not work for everyone <laughs> because we work in, you know, different fields than many people do. We have a full-time job currently, and we work full-time 40 hours a week at a dispensary, a uh, legal marijuana dispensary, legally. <laughs> We're not breaking the law. We're legal drug dealers. Yeah, we found the job, and uh, the next step is how to apply to the job. You find the place you want to work, and you see maybe they have a hiring sign. Uh, one of the things you go in is, come on, boy. He jumped up all by himself. <laughs> so yes, most places are almost always accepting applications, but they're not always hiring. Sometimes they're only hiring um, a few months out of the year, or a few points in the year, or when someone quits or gets fired. And so having a uh, resume on file is definitely something that jobs enjoy doing sometimes. So just being able to give your resumes out to places that you are interested in but aren't necessarily seeking very soon employment in is an option as well. But if you are seeking very quick employment, there are apps like Indeed and uh, I think LinkedIn. We've used Indeed a few times. Um, nothing we really, nothing we really liked on there, but that was just because the jobs we did enjoy were uh, just not posted on that one. <laughs> it varies. Sometimes you'll find your dream job where we would never find ours. So after you find your job and you put in your applications and everything, they ought to call you back for an interview or to, or to thank you for your application and politely decline. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. We got rejected by Fred Myers. Fred Myers, <laughs> a grocery store, which we find hilarious because now we're full time. We are fully time employed in a job you have to have a permit for and they got back to us two weeks after we had been employed at this job. So sometimes they do not get back to you in timely manners at all, like big factory businesses like that. They may take a while to get back to you. So that's that's something to know. I, I'm pretty sure that's mostly in America. I don't know other countries. Yeah, yeah, I don't know other countries. It's probably similar, but they're probably so much more organized. <laughs> So then the interview is the next step, scheduling that, and then deciding who goes to it. If you're a system, that can be a challenge. 
that can definitely be a challenge. So who went to our interview for this job was Terrence. Uh, Terrence and his crew were, like his crew were co-conscious and he was the main fronter and he did the interview and really rocked it, I guess. We're employed and they love us, so I guess he would, he did really well. Yeah, we're having a great time so far, a really great job, but deciding who would be the good one to kind of give a good representation of most of the system and kind of how they would generally behave around people in general. So we pick usually the ANPs, the more social types. We had Liberty go to one of our previous interviews, but um, he was going through a phase of being very anxious and I think he blew it. <laughs> But that's okay, because that was in Portland anyway, and we don't... We're okay with not living there anymore. And yeah, don't worry if you don't get the job the first time. Yeah, we've been rejected so many times. We've been to face-to-face -face interviews and then got the call back saying, uh, you know, thank you, but we'd like to go with some of the other candidates this time. And then we're just like, dang it, fine. I guess I'll check somewhere else then. And that's that's kind of how we we try to function is like fine if you don't like me then i'll go somewhere else for employment because sometimes people are just seeking really oddly specific things in their employees and it's okay if you don't fit into those cookie cutters yeah, sometimes it can take a while to find the really best job for you and in the meantime you might have to do some odd random jobs like for us we went to uh you know a fast food shop that we don't want to say the name of because it turns out that they are they don't support good causes and we didn't know that until after we quit and no it's not chick-fil-a we don't do that we don't do that here but we chose that job because we knew that it was something you could pick up very quickly and it was something that people were trained for very quickly they had many employees that file in and out so it would be very easy to be just a face to blend into a crowd and just quickly vanish afterwards and yeah, our brain was not functioning in its proper capacity. We were basically in trauma headspace the whole time. And during that, sometimes your frontal lobes don't get as much activity as you'd like. And your brain basically focuses on everything here and below and essentially says it's more important to survive than think very complex thoughts. And we must focus on survival instead. And that's how our brain was going for a good six months. I think it was exhausting. It was exhausting. <laughs> but we found, you know, something to get some bills paid and get some food in the fridge. And, you know, <laughs> it worked for the time being. It was temporary. Jobs aren't always permanent. Jobs can be very temporary, and that is completely acceptable. Especially if you're in a place for a finite amount of time, like, our lease was up and we had to move, so we couldn't keep working in a place that we were now like five hours away from. That doesn't work. So yeah, it's fine if you can't stay at a job. Sometimes it's really bad for your health anyway, and we'll get to that in a minute. But now this is, assuming you have a job at this point, um, these are some of our tips that we use for our day-to-day -day management. Um, dressing for the fronters. Not all jobs let you dress how you want. We got extremely lucky with that in the way that basically if we don't have profanities or politics on our shirt, then we can wear whatever we want. And that's really cool. Very few jobs are that way. But you can kind of adjust what you are wearing to suit who's fronting, because sometimes that can be very important. But you know, sometimes you have to wear what you have to wear but there are things that they can't police. For example, your socks. If an altar has a favorite pair of socks and they're the ones who are supposed to be fronting for that day, then they can wear those no problem. Or maybe uh, a pair of earrings, jewelry, eyeshadow color, hairstyles. Um, you know, style colors of shirts, like if you have to wear a specific type of shirt but are permitted different colors, different colors, uh, masks nowadays. Masks. <laughs> that is one of our favorite things of, you know, who is who is one of our tells. This, that's one of the reasons why we wear such colors is the, some of these colors are connected to altars and it kind of tells who's out. 
Um, not always. Sometimes we have to wear the ones that are more breathable for work, but even so, we have altars that favor those things. And sometimes certain, certain accessories and such will bring other altars closer to the front. Glasses are another one that could work as well. Come on. <laughs> there are quite a few um, online sites where you can get really inexpensive pairs of glasses if you know your prescription or wear prescription lenses. Uh, you can get pairs for about 20 to 30 dollars each at a place like I Buy Direct, for example, if you're in America. I think they ship to other countries. Not positive, but they might. But there are plenty of uh, eyeglasses sites where you can buy inexpensive glasses if that's something that appeals to your system. But yes, even if you have dress codes and such, there are still little things you can do to your outfits to make them different and unique for each alter's tastes. Just think about, you know, how would so-and-so wear this uniform? How would the protector wear this uniform? How would the ANP wear this uniform? How would the gatekeeper wear this uniform? Each one might have a slightly different taste or a different style, but still remains in the dress code, and sometimes it's fun to see that. And then having backup. This is one of our most important ones, is to have backup. Whenever we're going about the day, it's very, I think it's kind of hazardous myself. It, this is my opinion as a gatekeeper. It's hazardous to have one altar alone without any backup because what if something happens, they would just dissociate and then there would be basically no one or the autopilot in the body and that's just not good. You don't want that to happen really because you'll just be spacing out and staring at the wall for indefinite amounts of time. I say with annoyance glaring internally at my own system. We've had altars who try to lock themselves so that they are the only ones out like that and it's just frustrating. So don't, <laughs> if you're like us, if, you're, if your system functions like us, having backup might be a good idea. Like if there are certain altars that work very well with the one who wants to front mostly for the day, then have them be co-conscious, maybe play their favorite songs on the way to work, but not their like super strong positive trigger songs because that could cause a switch but you know just enough to get them interested in the front and keeping their eyes on what's going on out here so that they could potentially help if they need to because things can be very unpredictable oh especially at jobs oh my god <laughs> so it's always good to be prepared for very random things to happen and this kind of ties in with how we usually handle our trauma holders as well Usually we have a specific protector that watches over a specific trauma holder. For example, we have Rift who watches over Hollow and then Chasm who watches over Nobody. And that's all the clear examples right now. Um. <laughs> I withhold knowledge because I can and I should. And we generally do the same thing towards our littles as well. We usually have altars that watch over them, though it's kind of a group, like Fenrir usually watches over the littles. And then, do we have a couple others here and there? Usually having someone there to comfort them in case something bad happens, or to be there to make sure they don't get hurt or something is always a good idea. And then another good thing is to carry a grounding item in your pocket. For example, we've got you know, a nice little pocket stone. It's shaped like like an oval and it's very nice to hold. So having something like that in your pocket that you could just, you know, put your hands in your pocket, hold the grounding item, that's another very good way to remain grounded and also to kind of manage your triggers at work. Because usually for us, when we get triggered, we just dissociate very heavily or feel very strong waves of emotion. Usually we don't like do anything it we kind of just freeze it's inconvenient but having something to hold and ground ourselves with in our pocket is convenient and you can do all sorts of things with those like uh fidget cubes there are rings that are they're like spinner rings they have a layer and you can kind of spin them and we definitely want to invest in one of those one of our friends had that and that was a super cool thing there are plenty of other fidget things besides the cubes if you don't like those. Um, Amazon, I'm certain, has plenty, and Etsy may as well. 
Etsy may actually be a really good um, a good place to look for grounding items because there is so many different ways, so many different things, so many different people, <laughs> and and so many different sensory processes. Uh, Etsy has a lot more customizable things than something like, oh, Amazon would, and it's also made by you know smaller businesses and real people <laughs> instead of some some ginormous company. And we also wanted to plug another channel because managing triggers, we don't have the best advice besides <laughs> try to ground yourself and try to distract yourself as best as you can. But a system called Cosmic Realms made another video, much like this one about DID and work, where they talk much more thoroughly about managing triggers at work in much better ways than we are able to currently. <laughs> When people are like, how do you manage your triggers with DID? We're just like, uh, dissociate and then try to not dissociate. <laughs> but that's not necessarily effective. And then my last point was, don't overdo it. If the job itself is completely draining on your health, for example, Acrylic was doing this one job answering phone calls, being a, a call representative, I think that's what you call it. And that was just a terrible job for them. The customers were just horrendous. And working on a computer like that all day was something that they couldn't really do because formats and such, and then just the way they were doing that work. And that was before everyone was very solidly and adjustedly working at home and it was a mess. So given circumstances, if it's really terrible for your health, there is no shame in getting out of there. We did that with Target and still don't regret that. <laughs> yeah, getting out of there for, for your own health can sometimes be the best option for you when it comes to workplaces and situations. Having DID, OSDD, DDNOS is not something that will define your career inherently. You can work with it, you can find something that will work with you, or you can find a way to exist that's non-traditional and there's no shame in that. You don't have to do exactly the same thing as everyone else. Everyone's life looks completely different. I mean, take me versus, you know, one of my bosses, for example, our lives are completely different. What I would do is completely different than what she would do and we still work at the same place. Yeah, everyone is unique and jobs are unique as well. So there's something out there for you. Even if it's working from home, you can you can sell your crafts. You can sell crafts on Etsy. <laughs> and we do that and it's a good time. But make sure not to overdo it. Don't pick a job like being a politician, say, if you're fresh out of inpatient. <laughs> that may not be the best choice. Uh, take, take baby steps. Um, Pay close attention to how your whole system is feeling and what's, you know, what's what you guys can do and what would be overdoing it for you. Because everyone has a place in this world and sometimes it just takes a little while to find it. So here's to hoping you all find your places in the world. Thank you for watching. Please take care of yourselves if there's anything else you'd like to know, really. Um, well, we're not going to be discussing our exact workplace. We won't tell the name of it, just to say that. Um, any other questions, leave them down below in the comments. Um, please take care of yourselves. Um, remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like notifications for this channel. Feel free to check out all the links in our description and do read the descriptions. We do have uh, trigger warning lists in there on basically every video at this point because I feel like we need them, <laughs> at least vaguely. So don't forget to check our descriptions. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. He's finally getting some of his hair back. Look at how beautiful he is.